be our first series of the various Poptic related talks, and we will continue bringing more interesting topics on the subject, so please stay tuned. Allow me to introduce myself first. Uh, I am Fatma Rahimi. I'm a, an analyst within the advisory team in KPMG Qatar, and I will be the moderator of today's session. Now, please welcome with me our speakers of the panel. Today, we have with us from KPMG Qatar, Nizar Hneini, a partner within the advisory practice leading the digital and technology teams with more than 12 years' experience in advising boards and senior leadership in public and private sector on digital transformation, governance, and strategy execution. Anura Gupta, a director within advisory who has more than 17 years experience across various functions, including real estate, infrastructure, and logistics. Shakib Wabi, a market-facing manager within KPMG's management consulting advisory practice. He has more than seven years of experience working in the Middle East and Europe across various sectors focused all around data and digital transformation. And joining us from Singapore is Jan Rainmuller from KPMG Digital Village, who is the founder and head of Digital Village and is responsible for turning opportunities or challenges into customer-centric products or services and serves as an independent innovation partner for corporate clients. Now, before we start, I would like to kindly invite all of our audience to answer our poll questions for the day. The questions are, what do you think about PropTech? Do you think that you have never heard of it? Is it just a buzzword to you? Do you feel like it has a great potential? Or do you feel like it's a transformative concept? We have allocated around 30 seconds for our audience to answer the first question. Again, this question helps us understand uh, the general uh, understanding of the audience uh, around these topics. So, it feels like there's a, at least a minimum understanding in our audience about this uh, property concept. Um, we have 50%, almost 50% of our audience that believe that it has a great potential. Um, some people have never heard of it. Some people think it's a, it's a new buzzword, which is something that we're going to talk about later. And some people think that it has a very transformative uh, concept. So the next, next question to ask our audience is, do you think the real estate market will revive soon? Do you think it's going to w revive within the next six months, within a year, more than a year, or never? So our results are so the majority of the audience thinks that the real estate market will revive in more than a year. And I personally believe this is a this is a rational period for, for a sector to revive as it is very kind of complicated for a sector to revive. It's it's gonna take a more than a year. So Let's talk about this. Um, over the past few years, real estate performance honestly has not been at its best. In fact, the KPMG rental index on organized assets such as commercial office, residential, retail malls, and even QCB's capital index has fallen. Now, my question is to Anurag. I mean, you have been tracking the real estate market for more than 10 years now. So according to you, how do you analyze the current situation? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Fatma, for this. Uh, uh, and first of all, I would like to thank all the audience today who have joined our webinar. Many thanks. Uh, yes, you are right, Fatma, uh, that the real estate market has not been performing uh, very well for the past past few years now, and we have been tracking it uh, honestly. Uh, I would like to give you a bit of a background before I start uh, uh, giving you a little bit of my perspectives here. 
I mean, uh, the the organized real estate market in Qatar started off somewhere around 2006. It was a time when the Asian Games uh, were being conducted, and after that, uh, uh, you know, by 2010, Qatar got the opportunity to uh, uh, conduct the FIFA Games in 2022, and that was a time which where uh, most of the realtors got uh, uh, excited about the opportunity, and then the real estate was started booming again. Uh, and you could see that a uh, lot of areas where there was undersupply, uh, uh, the realtors have started building and bringing more uh, more assets into that area. However, uh, uh, there was one more fact which I wanted to talk about is that right before 2010, there were a lot of developments which were planned across Qatar. Uh, there was a development plan for al redevelopment. Uh, there was a plan for Al-Shamal redevelopment, Bhutan redevelopment, missile redevelopment. So the idea was to develop multiple satellite cities in, in Qatar. But because of the winning of the FIFA, uh, you know, and where the opening and the closing ceremony of the of the games has to happen, most of the uh, concentration uh, uh, came to develop the Luzail city as a whole, and and you would see that it is still a part of extend, extended part of Doha. So there was a bit of a concentration risk, but that was the need of the R uh, to be honest. Uh, so as the as the development started progressing, uh, somewhere down the line, the economy was not the global economy was not uh, uh, was not able to match the pace, and then there were issues. Uh, I remember in 2014 uh, there was uh, uh, the global oil price shocks. Uh, in 2017 uh, there was a blockade, uh, which also you know uh, did bit of a damages. Uh, and and now now it is COVID. So 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 the whole whole real estate has seen a lot of problems and challenges along the way. What this did was that it led to cancellation of a lot of large projects and big projects. And what uh, uh, it led exactly is that the the population growth suffered specifically in the area of uh, the white collared workers, which are which are primarily the consumers of the organized real estate uh, which we are which we are talking about. And uh, uh, and that is that is that is what has brought us uh, brought us to this uh, this stage as of now. And then you could see that around five six years back, commercial office space went into an oversupply mode. Uh, over the period of time now, uh, you can see almost all asset classes have come to a over, uh, have come to a saturated stage uh, 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 currently. But one thing which uh, which I wanted to highlight is that oversupply is primarily from a quantum perspective. But if you look from a quality perspective, I think there is a lot of things to be done and there is a significant scope. Uh, there is a lot of friction in the real estate economy. There are a lot of problems and challenges which are yet to be solved. And I see uh, for a lot of realtors, there's a, there's a great opportunity here. Thank you very much, Anushad. Um, I think you raised a very interesting point here is uh, when you mentioned the disparity between the um, supply of quantity and supply of quality, and you said that there is still a way ahead to, um, to supply a better quality in the real estate market. Um, I think this urges um, my next question to you, which is what do you think are the possible remedies for that? Uh that's a that's a tricky question, uh, uh, and there is no right or there is no wrong answer for it. Uh, but we can we can discuss about about this aspect in in great detail. First of all, let us understand who are the drivers of uh, real estate. Real estate is a is like a tertiary support center. It is it is totally dependent on how the manufacturing sector performs, the trading sector performs, the service sector performs. And when all these sectors perform very well, you need people. And when the people are there, they will be here. They need office spaces. They need retail places to go and shop. They need housing, so and so forth. So, so, so the real estate also flourishes accordingly. Uh, in in this whole framework, there are two very very main stakeholders. One is the government, and another one is the is the realtor itself. And when I say realtor, it's a whole community of realtors, including construction companies. The, the developers, uh, the financiers, etc. Now, if you look at the government side, uh, uh, 
whatever government does is based on its understanding and it is not, uh, it is it, it cannot be necessarily the way you want them to operate it is they have much larger challenges and issues around them so there is no control on the government and how do they spend or their spending patterns secondly uh, there is a part of the property laws um, um, the visa laws the property laws for example if you look at qatar market it has been primarily a rental market for a, for a very good long time uh, the the expat community cannot buy freehold properties here, so it was primarily a rental market. I think uh, the the laws have been changed very recently, and the the real impact and and I think more number of uh, uh, locations in country have come under the purview of of the freehold land perspective. So how it actually helps real estate market is yet to be seen. Uh, so so obviously these things are not in the control of. Uh, uh, of the private developers and the real estate companies, what is there? What is in is in in their hand is basically the the way the properties are being developed and the way they are being operated and the way they are being transacted. And this is an area where I think a uh, huge amount of work is still pending. I can see significant amount of challenges, frictions, uh, uh, which which really. Are, are calling to be to, to get solved. And that is where I feel that it's a phase where we, and we have time to sort all those things. And one of the possible remedy, not it is not the remedy, but one of the possible remedy is that if companies can start adopting uh, digital tools to really uh, uh, increase their revenue, manage their costs, and improve their efficiencies. And this is an important aspect. And if you look at real estate itself, it is a kind of an asset class which is a bit grumpy. It is it doesn't move very fast, and it is the last sector also. If you see, which is uh, uh, which even all the uh, new tech companies say that it is the last sector which will which will get disrupted. But I think we are at the at the at the at the gate where the things have started happening, and a lot of things in the area of digital uh, are going has already started happening. And I think Qatar. It, it will it will it will it will come to Qatar soon. Uh, I, I, we have we have uh, uh, Nizar Nizar with us. He's our digital innovation partner, and I would like him to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, this aspect of digital transformation within the real estate space. That would be very helpful. Thank you, Anurag. Thanks, Fatma, and uh, thanks for everyone attending uh, this webinar. Uh, the, the the topic of prop tech is uh, is definitely exciting and gaining uh, a lot of attention nowadays. As you rightly mentioned, uh, Anurag, uh, it it uh, real estate hasn't been doing great lately, maybe globally. And now with the COVID, that didn't make it better at all. In Qatar, we feel we feel uh, this is happening as well. Uh, so PropTech, and as our attendees uh, confirmed, could be uh, something to to uh, uh, disrupt in in a way to improve how how the real estate sector is doing. Uh, talking about developers, uh, finding new ways to 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 access clients and market. Talking about uh, construction company, how they could expedite, uh, optimize the cost of their uh, of their uh, of their projects. So there is a lot to do. But let's take a, a step back uh, when we're talking about uh, about uh, uh, digital. Uh, I think digital is one of the most uh, hyped words, and definitely it's it's mis misused a lot. So anybody doing uh, IT any IT related project uh, for for the sake of may making it a bit more attractive nowadays would call it digital. Uh, for us. What we understand with digital is uh, is is uh, is being at the crossroads of of, of the business uh, and the IT, or or better said, it is how you can leverage the advance in the technology and your IT tools to del to to deliver more value to your to your business. I'm not talking here only real estate across across the board in any enterprise. At KPMG, we have our uh, connected enterprise approach, which is how we support enterprises to go on the uh, uh, through their digital transformation journey, connecting the, the front end, which would be the, the, the sales, uh, customer service, touch points, through the middle part, which is the operations supply chain, 
with the back end, which are the supporting functions, uh, IT, HR. So digital would, would, would help glue all of those together and, and support uh, the enterprise in, 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 in bringing more value to, to its clients. So this would mean that uh, the enterprise really understands its, its, its business. Uh, it's, it's maybe trivial for a lot of people, but uh, if you go through this exercise, put your enterprise, dissect the value chain, how you are uh, generating value across your whole uh, portfolio of services, your whole organization products, uh, it, 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 you will get a lot of insights. And then when you have customer experience and uh, some uh, some sense of, of uh, taking taking risks, because digital is a lot of about, about taking risks. Uh, you see that with the, with the startups that we so much admire. Uh, they have they have uh, they have uh, strategies like pivoting, uh, trial and error with bringing products and services to the market. This is not something that all enterprises are good at. So uh, you need a bit of this spirit to put into into the equation. And when you look at all the data you have, you bring in the right partners. You have an open mind to innovate and 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 look at at uh, again being customer centric and how the, your customer is benefiting of that this is uh, the real the real essence of of of, uh, of 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 being digital this is how you improve your customer experience you always find ways to communicate better with your customer and companies who did that saw the benefit clearly during the covid-19 uh, crisis which we we're still living it, it has an internal part how your employees feel how they become more productive using th those tools uh, you can better manage your your business performance uh, your, your 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 enterprise also needs to be more secure so you leverage that digital uh, type of work to do that and most importantly for the businesses uh, they can uh, generate new new revenue streams by having this new look at their market and clients or enhance the, the, their current products and services and uh, increasing uh, those uh, uh, those revenues coming from them. So if, if you noticed in, in the two or three minutes I talked about digital, we didn't talk yet any technology. We didn't throw uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, AR, VR. These are all uh, important aspects, and if you look at, at the slide in front of you, this is uh, coming from the KPMG Real Estate Innovations Overview. This shows what type of innovations are coming uh, onto the, 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 the real estate uh, sector through prop tech and what type of, of, of uh, innovations are there. You see mostly they are around digitizing processes, so looking into your processes, making sure they are more digital, which enhances your productivity and uh, allows you to better uh, manage your business. And there are also a lot of uh, uh, a lot of platforms to connect. That could be one of the um, most uh, experimented with uh, innovations in, in real estate uh, matching supply and demand. Uh, there are also other aspects uh, using augmented reality, virtual reality. I think my colleagues will talk about that a, a bit later, but also using IoT for a construction company to, to monitor closely the progress of their projects to make sure uh, that they, they also configure their supply chain rightly and have just-in-time supply, which will help them better with managing uh, their cash flow as well. So uh, a lot of topics uh, where, where digital could help and where PropTech can come uh, and add value. Now, uh, we have also with us uh, our colleague, uh, Jan from from uh, our KPMG Digital Village in Singapore, and I'm sure Jan, uh, through the work that he's doing with with a lot of his digital clients, can give us his view uh, uh, on on uh, on uh, product and the digital uh, digital uh, transformation in general, how that could benefit uh, uh, enterprises. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. I find it quite interesting, the opening question here. Do you think uh, the property sector will revive in the next uh, uh, six months or 12 months? And, you know, what we see here, you know, it's a very good indication into my topic, actually. It's like 67% are saying in more than a year. 
But if I would share with you now what was in the news here in Singapore is actually that new, uh, new private home sales surged by 75% in, in May this year. And this was it's interesting because it was despite the lockdown. Singapore was in a lockdown and still private home sales surged. So the topic I want to talk about now is really about, you know, the understanding of customer needs. So how can you know, we learn from other industries which are doing this in perfection? And how can we actually understand these evolving needs of customers to a point to that we are more predictive? So especially in the, in the property sector where we see very long lead times between the start of the project you know, to you know, realization, you know, lots of things happening. And obviously, as we all know, the changing or the evolving needs of customers are happening as well. So when we look at tech companies, you know, and you know how they're doing this, actually we have to go a bit back in history. If you look at the 1900s, you know, how we produce products was basically through a push model. We really try to push products out and then make customers aware of it. And sometimes I feel, you know, that's very similar to what we're doing in a property space. If you look at the a pull model that just came into the 1990s, so at least we tried a bit of an understanding of what customer wants and then produced it. And now in the 2020, where we see many industries are moving into what we call the prediction model, to really anticipate what customer wants tomorrow and then build it. And I think that's something we should really see as an ambition, as a vision where we want to be. But again, it's very easy to say to move in such a predict model. So how I'm going to do this? The most important is again to look at these tech companies out there. And I'm including we work here as well in this because they're doing this also quite smartly. It's this continuous engagement. So, so continuous engagement with your customer tenants, you can actually capture four different types of data sets. Transactional data is a transaction they're doing every month with you, for example, as you went. Contextual data is really about, you know, why people are doing certain things. Then the behavioral data um, is about why people behave in certain situations, why do they want certain things. And the last one is the, the motivational data, data. That's basically the fundamental uh, data set, uh, motivational data, which is all about why we buy. So if you can somehow get these four different data sets um, into one central database and read out of it, you make much better business decisions and you get much better insights. And then I would predict that your questions we asked in the very beginning, what do you think how this property sector will you know, develop in the next 24 months, you are much clearer because you know it from your customer firsthand. So the question really is, how can the real estate industry acquire those data sets? And we believe, and that's what we also see in Singapore, is that the loyalty aspect are playing a major role here. If you can somehow incentivize your customers, your tenants, by sharing certain data sets with them, with you, but at the same time you're incentivizing them by giving them for a form of loyalty points eventually, then it's a win-win for everyone. So I find this very a, a interesting concept. But I want to hand over back to Nisa and, you know, for my introduction, I have more things to share with you, but Nisa, over to you. Actually, uh, you got us really excited about that. This is definitely a topic we wanted to hear a bit more uh, about uh, from you, Jan, and from the colleagues in the digital village. Uh, we know loyalty is key for the behavioral type of, 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 of data that we, uh, that we could collect from consumers. We saw a lot of success. Uh, coming uh, from retail companies, aviation. I mean, uh, through through your aviation uh, experience, uh, loyalty and your loyalty program actually dictates for you as a consumer how do you behave. You might even go for for a more expensive ticket to 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 uh, get more more points, or you could uh, you you're willing to sacrifice a couple of hours to go through your. Uh, your, your favorite airline and, and uh, because of the loyalty program they have. So with that success in other, in other sectors, you think real estate uh, developers or the real estate sector could, could uh, adopt uh, similar, uh, similar uh, strategies, similar programs? 
Absolute. And that's what we are seeing in Singapore. So imagine, you know, you are as a property developer, for example, you actually don't have direct access to the customer. There's always an agent in between. So we see this in many industries where, you know, outside the property sector, you know, companies trying to cut off this middleman and finally get direct access to their customers and actually learn and hear them out what they really want. Because today the only feedback they get is from the agent. So what we see in Singapore now is that, you know, large developers here, large real estate companies we have, they are trying to transform themselves into a tech company. We see companies like Capital Land in Singapore, they're launching their own food delivery service. And their food delivery service is actually taking the food from the restaurants in their mall. Or e-commerce platforms, they're launching e-commerce platforms. Basically, all the tenants are running on their own, are running on their e-commerce platform. Customers can order and obviously then get it delivered to a third party. But imagine, now suddenly, Capital Land from being sitting on the back seat, now suddenly sits in the front seat and actually gathers all these, you know, customer deals without upsetting the tenants or the restaurant or someone else. It's the win-win. So whatever we do here, it, we have to create this win-win situation where you know individuals are willing to share something, to do something when they realize they're getting something out of it. And that's why we believe that this loyalty aspect is, is so excited because you can really incentivize individuals by doing so. And you build these solutions. They cannot sit in isolation. I think that's really the most important. We need to look at, even as I said earlier, e-commerce, food delivery, you cannot have these standalone solutions which doesn't connect. You really need to think into what we call platform business. Platform business is exactly what the likes of Facebook, Google, in the insurance space, Ping On, all of them are running platform business. So you capture what we call the data at source, and then after this, you shift them into the, your backend system, in your legacy system. Which also means it's highly, uh, obviously highly cost effective because you don't really have to build up, you know, go to major, major digital transform. You basically just sit on top as a kind of an aggregator. So the platform we have built here in Singapore, you know, used by many clients now is basically left your loyalty platform, which all enables different ecosystems, different propositions, all the things I basically uh, highlighted to. You can build completely new business models on. Imagine you have these data sets which you at the end of the day is selling to your competitor at a high price. Or you're moving into the consulting business. You know, what is the right tendency? What should be on the shelf? Imagine how far you can go, you know, how much far you can go and you can take out from your core business. And I think in times like this, where we are all our revenues are somehow, you know, cut into. We need to think about new revenue. So loyalty as a key enabler is highly effective. Um, you should always keep in mind, the one who owns the customer controls the customer and ultimately wins. But I want to hand over back to Nissa. Um, oh, Thank you. Thank you, Nisa and Jan. You have mentioned many examples on how going digital uh, can disrupt the business model across all the functions from the front end to the back end. Um, you've stressed upon the importance of creating an ecosystem where um, we can engage the customer, or we, can, we can track their, their behavior. Um, and we focused on the old loyalty program solution here. But we're not going to stop there. And this is why we have Shakib with us, who's going to demonstrate um, other use cases on PropTech. Shakib, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fatma. Um, so yes, indeed, uh, we're talking about PropTech, and there are indeed several innovations that PropTech have been uh, exploring recently, and they really touch upon the whole value chain of, of real estate services. Um, so we've been talking about uh, customer, customers, and I think uh, it's a very important topic uh, because PropTech has really changed the way real estate actors attract, retain, and satisfy their customers using uh, digital innovations. 
Uh, Jan, you just talked about customer retention, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important areas real estate companies should focus on indeed. And you explained why. And one of the reasons is simply uh, because it's far more expensive, actually, to attract new customers than to retain existing ones. Uh, some retail studies even talk about a five times multiplier. Uh, so when we think about real estate, which is a brick and mortar business by design, uh, we have all these issues related to COVID-19, such as fin the financial difficulties of, of customers, to, of clients today, the health and, and safety concerns that they might have and that are linked to the physical interactions uh, that are so typical in a real estate business. And all those will only, uh, I think, make this cost even higher uh, and, and make us question also the effectiveness of attraction efforts. But uh, prop tech companies have indeed invested heavily in, in this subject, in customer attraction, to bridge this gap and make it more effective, less costly, and uh, more digital. Um, I have some questions, uh, some, some examples here about some innovations that have been used to, to, to attract customers, and you can see them on the left-hand side of, of the screen. Uh, but one of these examples uh, that I see is very important, and it's starting to be used here in Qatar, is virtual reality. Um, so we've seen some big actors here in Qatar using virtual reality to, to provide customers with online uh, viewings of their uh, goods and properties. Uh, but what prop tech companies have brought to this area is technology that makes it even easier to bring these virtual reality technologies to customers. And I have an example uh, here in Turkey uh, about a prop tech company called Overstruck that was created in 2017 um, and that provides design and planning services. What this uh, company has done is uh, it, it produces it's produced this PC software that creates arch, arch, architectural virtual reality walkthroughs walk automatically and easily from existing 3D project files and BIM files. So it, there is no need anymore to hire, for example, a media company to shoot 360 interactive videos uh, and then upload them to, to your website. You can use your already existing 3D project files in order to create realistic simulations that would be, help uh, walk through customers in a digital manner uh, through all the uh, properties and, and uh, buildings you want to lease or, or sell. Linked to that, and because real, uh, I personally believe that real estate will not transform itself to a fully digital business right away or in the near future. So it's always going to be this mix between uh, physical and digital interactions. So in addition to um, virtual reality, prop tech companies have also been investing in technologies that make this link between digital and physical, such as augmented and mixed reality. And a simple use case of that would be, for example, uh, this prop tech company, Silver Wings in Singapore, maybe you, you, you know it, Jan, uh, Jan, that was created in 2015, and that provides uh, solutions for augmented and mixed reality that would allow, for example, a client that's interest, who, who's, who's interested in a, in a commercial real estate to come visit the, the raw uh, goods or the raw unit and to use augmented and mixed reality in a tablet, for example, in order to furnish it and uh, bring in more configurations that would help him project himself uh, while visiting the building, which makes the uh, sale process easier uh, and will help uh, real estate companies land deals uh, faster. So this is about the customer attraction. Uh, now I'm going to move on once to, to customer satisfaction. When you attract your customer, you need to satisfy your customer in order for you to retain it. And here there are several aspects where um, project companies have invested. But I, I will just give one example here around facility, ma facility management and maintenance. So um, there is, for example, this uh, company, this 
property company Lucid Drones Technology in the US, uh, which specializes in uh, creating drones that can clean buildings anywhere from washing windows to roofs uh, or nearly any service in between. And we can think of uh, Qatar as a market where, where such technologies can work because we have a lot of high rise buildings uh, where you will not need any lifts, ladders or scaffolds to clean your, your buildings. You will not need the uh, human resources needed and the risks that are inherent to their work in order to uh, do your maintenance work related to cleaning. Drone technology can also be used, by the way, to survey, for example, any maintenance issues that you might have in your buildings, in the roofs, in high rise, or to survey simply uh, your construction building, et cetera, et cetera. So these are just some examples of uh, really cutting edge digital technology that has been leveraged by uh, prop tech companies in the real estate sector and that we can leverage here in Qatar as well. Yeah, I would, uh, thanks, Shakib. Uh, I would just like to add a few more things which are quite, pretty interesting uh, in the prop tech sector, specifically uh, in the coming days, the, the, the coming up of the, the use of the blockchain technology in the area of real estate is going to significantly help. And it is something which can be used in the areas where property rights are, are a very important factor and uh, the timeliness is a, is a great factor. And there you would find a significant amount of use cases of uh, uh, prop tech tools developed around the blockchain platform coming into four, which we typically call as the next wave uh, where the new things are start will start going to happen. And I would just to just to add in and give give a bit more of flavor. Thank you. Thank you, Shakib and Anubra, for these insightful examples. You've mentioned very various examples on um, how PropTech use cases can help uh, with customer attraction, customer retention, and satisfaction. Um, now, before we move to our Q&A session, we have our last question for the audience to ask. Uh, again, please, I, I highly invite all of our audience to ask any questions that they have. Please don't be, be shy. Um, okay, so the last question for the audience, which prop tech use case will be the first one to be adopted in Qatar? According to you, it's, there's no right or wrong question. What do you think um, the, the first use case will be adopted in Qatar? Is it digitizing processes, innovative construction, Internet of Things, or customer experiences? So the results show that 44% of our audience think that customer experiences will be the first to be adopted in Qatar, 25% think that it's digitizing processes, 13% think it's Internet of Things, and 6% think it's innovative construction. Now, what, well, my thoughts about this is I think that there will be a lot in, in innovative construction since we are still thinking or still um, making a lot of developments in, in the construction. So uh, we will see about that. Uh, okay, now moving on to the Q&A session. I have more than four questions in the Q&A box. Well, if you haven't asked a question, please post it again. Um, so the first question I have here, it says, the panelists have demonstrated that digital tools or profit can help revitalize the real estate market in a great way. How far do you think this is true? Is PropTech just a buzzword or is it of real value? Fatma, let me let me take this uh, let me take this question. I I don't think uh, uh, PropTech is a buzzword uh, as this has been and we have seen I mean Jan talking about uh, how it can actually uh, help collect so much of valuable customer data. And use of that data, you can actually convert that data and to develop new business models and how uh, various developers that are can actually change the way they can they can really work in the coming days. Uh, also, uh, uh, Shakib demonstrated uh, the interesting uses. I was to be very honest, fascinated by the drones use and how it can actually reduce the risk on the people who are working there, plus reduce the cost and also increase the frequency of. Uh, 
of cleaning of the buildings, which is a which is a massive task in many of the buildings, specifically in this part of the region. Uh, so I don't think it's a buzzword, but even if it is a buzzword, it doesn't matter because it helps uh, promoting this economy uh, in a in a much much bigger way. And and as I said, you know, we prop tech is not a new term. It has been used in the past. The only thing is that we have not we might have not used it as a word prop tech. The CAD software, the building information management systems, the property management system called YARD, these have been there for a good long time. Uh, only the only thing is that the new companies which are actually working in the area of prop tech have started thinking about uh, developing new tools in a very different way. What they do is that they go through the entire value chain, try to find out what are the problems, what are the frictions, how it can be more efficient, and once they uh, get that get that problem right, they are able to uh, develop a possible uh, solution which is which is technology based, and that actually helps making the whole system work 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 very smoothly. Also, uh, it will be good to uh, highlight that the amount of investments which are going in the area of prop tech are also pretty encouraging. I mean, more than 800 percent year on year growth is 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 happening. Uh, although as of now it is much lesser as compared to what we have seen in the printing because that's much more matured and prop tech is starting. Uh, but we would see that in the coming years, this, this is going to be a, a, a major thing. And then a lot of companies, uh, countries will start using these technology tools. I mean, it's important for Qatar, uh, as I have already said in the past, uh, uh, regarding the issues related to, to economy, related to uh, regulations, also, if you see some of the concepts which were there back in US uh, in 1970s, the concept of real estate investment trust have still not hit the shores of Qatar. So we are a little uh, uh, slow in adopting new technologies. So I think uh, uh, irrespective of it is a buzzword, it will be great uh, that these things are much adopted in Qatar uh, in a much faster way. And I think that is how um, uh, it can help revitalize uh, the Qatar real estate market to a certain extent. Um, Anurag, I, I just wanted to maybe mention uh, something. Uh, so I gave indeed some examples of how PropTech uh, can bring innovations to help the real estate sector, but these were just some select examples about, you know, cutting edge technologies that have been uh, uh, explored by PropTech companies. But the actual digital tools that uh, prop tech companies bring can go beyond this and, and cover really the whole end-to-end -end, uh, value chain of, of uh, uh, real estate, the real estate sector. Uh, we talked about digitizing processes, uh, how we can uh, leverage data, as Jan uh, explained before, how we can make services accessible online in real time. Uh, we're, we're talking about, about uh, new innovative construction methodologies and methods. Uh, involving uh, 3D uh, printing, bringing sustainable innovations such as energy saving, water efficiency uh, technology. Uh, we talked about VR, 3D drones, but we must also talk about the new ways of working or, or new business models that these prop tech companies are, are bringing. Uh, they're bringing concepts such as co-working and, and Fatma, you talked in the beginning about WeWork, for example. They bring other concepts such as co-living, uh, flexible storage uh, leasing, for example, uh, warehouse and office space on demand that's flexible and, and caters to the need, to the immediate need actually sometimes of, of uh, customers. So I think that the scope and, and, and the spectrum of services that uh, property companies are exploring is is really uh, complete and, and can bring solutions that are really adaptable to the uh, local Qatari market. Thank you very much, Anurag and Shakib. My next question is, which is, it's, which is a very, very good question. With COVID-19 and the big pressure on the revenue streams, how can players in Qatar market can use PropTech to come up with new growth opportunities? Uh, let, let me take that, please, uh, Fatma, if I may. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jan touched upon that before uh, when he was talking about some examples in Singapore and when he uh, beautifully explained uh, the platform uh, business. And uh, 
as as uh, as Facebook and Amazon globally and and Apple and others uh, go and build their business around around their platforms and and making sure that they understand everything going on around their their clients uh, the real estate companies need to start thinking in the same way and uh, if they do that uh, any changes uh, affecting their customer lives they can uh, understand the impact of those changes and try to adapt their business models or on a lesser extent maybe uh, the, the products and services to cater for that so to, to go into concrete examples uh, 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 a commercial center operator uh, a mall operator can can support uh, the, the, the the businesses in his mall by offering them the the platform to deliver the goods to the to the to the to the consumers uh, uh, going through uh, going to uh, uh, to a loyalty offering where you really have closer interaction with your clients and you know how to to uh, uh, you, what their needs are and, and giving them something specific this could be uh, another way but uh, the real estate uh, sector need, needs to look about uh, more uh, digital uh, interaction with, with, with the consumers as physical interaction becomes now uh, uh, challenging with, with COVID-19 uh, and uh, going to the to the platforms matching demand and supply is definitely a good, uh, good good example for that but also for the biggest developers thinking from a smart city perspective how can they offer that smart city experience how they can uh, support uh, their clients by customized utility services to uh, optimize the, their bills and at the same time make some uh, Profits on the on the on the on the developer side. So there are a lot of scenarios utilizing digital, which would help uh, the real estate sector in, in still uh, coming up with something innovative and and improving their performance. Uh, maybe Jan would like to add something here uh, uh, on, again on Singapore and what's going on there. Yeah, uh, Nita, what we see in Singapore obviously is uh, also a lot of companies are actually cutting down on. Um, you know, office space, um, you know, which brings us a bit to the future, right? The future, you know, as we see, it will be probably more a hybrid model. Um, so don't think that we will all work from home for the rest of our life. I think it will be some form of uh, in-between office, in-between home, and eventually even in-between, um, you know, uh, co-working spaces. So how to respond, you know, to those changing needs? I think we should really think about, you know, what we heard multiple times now about technology, but also agility. We need to be faster. And that's something, again, which we can learn from other industries. If you look, for example, Inditex. Inditex is the company behind Zara. They can change their designs between, uh, in between two weeks, which compared to an industry standard of six months. So the question is, how are they doing this? And it's the same what I said multiple times before. They're doing this to continuous interaction with their consumers. They continuously interact them and ask them, do you like this or not? As simple as that. And then giving this feedback straight back to the designer who then implement these changes and again the production rolls out. So very simple concept. There's nothing like rocket science in there. It's just like gather, gather these insights and then use, it, use these insights um, for your advantage in the real estate, in the property space is as easy to actually give feedback from the showroom straight back to the architect. As simple as this. Or from your front office, feedback what's going on on the ground back to your to your office manager. You know, think about new flexible workspaces as Nisa highlighted in the very beginning. So I believe in times like this, and that's what we see in Singapore a lot, it's very important to stay close to your customer. And, and don't let it up for, you know, a destiny, you know, what could happen stay close to them, really try to understand, you know, what they are trying to do and where your customers are. And, you know, coming back to the loyalty aspect of it, I believe that loyalty being, loyalty being a key enabler, you know, for all of this, if it comes to, you know, gather this really deep insights about your customer, which can ultimately, let's say it again, will help you in making better business decisions. Do you, Fatma? Thank you very much, uh, Nizar and Jan. 
And my next question is, which segment of the residential real estate sector has a mismatch in demand and supply? And what kind of income range you will associate with this category? Um, I will take that question. Uh, 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 if you look at residential, obviously um, there are approximately 350,000 uh, residential units, dwelling units, which we call are already present uh, in, uh, in Qatar. Uh, uh, I think primarily on the high-end side, there is a more uh, uh, oversupply, but uh, it's coming in the area of uh, uh, medium segment as well. But I'm not too bothered about it because uh, you know, end of the day, it's a it's a it's a sovereign nation, and uh, uh, we have also seen in the past there's a lot of government activity in terms of boosting. So I know there are this this COVID and then and the equations will change, but. I think over a period of time, the things will start settling down. But the uh, great answer to the question is that, yeah, in, in high end segment, I see there's a bit of an oversupply. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next question is In the next two years, we have major projects to be completed. How does digitization can help us to meet the project completion timeline and reduce over costs? How the same can be imposed our contractors and suppliers? Uh, let me try to have a go at that. That seems to be something uh, very concrete from one of, uh, of, of, of the audience. Uh, yeah, so again, as, as we said, there is no, uh, there are a lot of technologies out there, and uh, uh, throughout this webinar, we're not trying to focus on one specific technology because. Uh, the starting point is always the business and the business need. So from, from uh, the question, I, I, I get a hint that the experience, and this is definitely common in real estate, maybe some of the attendees know that much better than I do, that projects are, are over budget, that they take much longer to, to execute than planned. Uh, and maybe this is what, these are the, the, the major uh, issues from a business perspective for the person who asked the question. And uh, we have several uh, aspects uh, within digital space that could help. Uh, one of them, for example, is, is analytics. If you run, uh, if you run across uh, your data, your historical data uh, about your projects, about the specific uh, contractors, uh, about the specific type of project, you can get insights uh, about when was uh, the major delay? Was it, uh, was it uh, more in the design phase? Did you have specific issues, specific vendors? Uh, there are cognitive tools, uh, for example, for contract management, where uh, artificial intelligence-based uh, algorithms can help you identify clauses in your contract uh, that, that you were not uh, aware of or the, which are not being uh, enforced. And, and enforcing them would help you with your with your cash flow, or will will make sure you have a better uh, uh, monitoring uh, on, on on your contractor. Uh, there are technologies like the digital twin, where where you where through through uh, some uh, sensors and based on IoT and analytics, you can really uh, see in a digital way the progress of, of, your, of your project in real time. And based on that, take corrective actions, corrective measures, and, uh, and, and uh, bring it, bring it uh, on track. So technology can help. Uh, actually, if you look from a technology perspective, uh, maybe the, 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 the clients would be, would be a bit lost. So they better focus from their business perspective what are the challenges that they are uh, facing? And from there, go into the technology to select the technologies, the tools, the, the, the algorithms that could help them solve their uh, business problems. And that by itself is a capability that you need to learn with time and you need uh, people who can help you with that. Thank you, Nizar. We have many more questions coming, but uh, unfortunately, since we don't have a lot of time, we're, we're just going to take one question, and you guys have two minutes to answer it. Um, the question goes, it seems obvious that PropTech presents great opportunities for the sector in Qatar, while the adoption has been slow. So what do you think, in your view, will trigger the change? You have two minutes to answer this question. 
Um, let me take that one, uh, Fatma, and I'll, I'll try to be very fast. I think the answer uh, is not just specific to uh, the real estate sector and prop tech sector, but to every sector today. I think we're in a moment where all companies uh, are uh, really exper experiencing it and seeing firsthand the power digital can bring to their business. Uh, and COVID-19 has a lot to um, thank for that. So I think that adoption will naturally be triggered uh, by this uh, surge in digital that we see in the overall market and not just in, in the real estate sector. Um, I was wondering if maybe uh, Jan can, can give us uh, some notions of how adoption, for example, has been hacked in, in, uh, in uh, Singapore since uh, you mentioned, for example, that in the midst of COVID-19, there has been a surge in, in the demand for um, goods in the real estate sector. So from an adoption in the pop tech space, I mean, what we see is, I mean, especially in the IoT, side of things, right? It's about smart buildings. I think that's where pop tech really stands out, bringing the hardware in, you know, which really helps, you know, you know, real estate developers, but also later tenants who have really more uh, environmental friendly uh, buildings, you know, lower energy, and that's really something, you know, what we see here from a development side, you know, uh, you know, everyone is looking after. So IoT, smart buildings, you know, smart lightning, you know, all these, these new home automation, you know, uh, things, this is definitely something where pop tech stands out, you know, as we speak. Um, but obviously there are many other things, you know, when it then comes to, 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 you know, what is the next big trend here, you know, beyond automation, I think that's something, you know, where we keep saying, you know, this will, the time will tell and, uh, you know, new things will, will, will uh, you know, come up from it. And, you know, we will see the COVID-19 impact, you know, how again, the, the customer needs and customer's behavior evolved through these, you know, these past pandemic. Um, yeah, that would be my answer to this. Thank you all uh, for our panelists for their insightful contribution. Uh, I feel like an hour is not enough to, to uh, discuss all of these uh, interesting topics. Um, we have reached the end of the session. Uh, I apologize to those whose uh, questions have not been answered, but um, they will be answered on email. And Good news, this session has been recorded. So if you know someone who has missed it, they haven't missed anything, they can uh, reach us on, on the video and the social media. Um, just taking a last glimpse of what we had discussed today, uh, we talked about the reality of the real estate market in Qatar and the emergent need to focus on delivering quality in times where there is an oversupply. We also stressed upon the importance of the presence of a subtle regulatory framework and the need for real estate stakeholders to keep eyes on the change in customer behavior and to keep up with the ever-changing market. And this is where going digital becomes a vital part to disrupt the business model functions from customer touch point to middle end to back end operations and also support customer traction, retention and satisfaction. And our panelists listed various user cases in the use of technology such as loyalty programs, virtual reality, augmented reality, and utilization of drones and facility management, and many, many more. And I believe the main takeaway of today's session is, in turbulent times, being digital can truly help several companies and institutions in the real estate market to continue their operation smoothly, and it proved to be the best path to revolutionize their functions and the economy worldwide, which we expect to be the case in Qatar as well. Again, I thank all of our speakers for today and everyone for their support to bring this webinar today. And finally, thank all of our audience for attending this session. Uh, we will be back soon with more series on this matter, so please stay tuned for this matter. Um, before you leave, I would like to request all of our audience to fill the feedback questionnaire, and that helps us greatly to improve in the future. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.